What is up everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Josh, this is Native Nomads. And today what I'm gonna do, I don't know if you can see that very well. I'm gonna show you how to disconnect the sway bar end link. This is the end link. On your Subaru Outback or Subaru Outback Wilderness, I would assume that this also applies for other Subaru models. We're gonna talk through why you're gonna do it, um, why you should do it, how it is. I have went out back, made a couple of videos to show the difference in going over some small bumps in our Outback Wilderness um, with the sway bar connected, with it disconnected. We're gonna talk through all of that. Is it safe? How you should be able to do it in about 10 minutes and uh, hopefully, get you guys out on the road a little bit more confident in those off-road situations while you're driving your Outback. Stay tuned. Okay, first let's talk about what a sway bar does. Well, a sway bar is what keeps your car from swaying on the road from side to side. Um, and for bigger vehicles, if you come from a world of Jeeps or power wagons like I do, there's, in most of them, a button where you could disconnect your front sway bar. When you disconnect that front sway bar, it allows more articulation in your front wheels, which makes driving off-road better. It makes it, uh, your vehicle more capable because you are less likely to tip over or roll to one side if your wheels have greater articulation. This end link, I hope this is in focus, this end link is what controls your sway bar. So when you take your end link off, I took this off because I actually broke it because I was messing around and one of the bushings here, um, I busted one of the bushings, but I was planning on taking this off anyways, so I'm not putting it back on, it's not a huge deal. Um, if you are going to put this back on, the best way to do this is when you get to a trail, you air down your tires to whatever PSI you air down your tires to. As you're doing that, you can take off either the top or the bottom and pull it out, zip tie it up out of the way, and now you have greater articulation. And it truly is that simple. Now, all you're gonna need for this is a 17 millimeter socket. A 17 millimeter socket fits directly on that bolt and it just pulls it right off. And once you get it off, you pop it out and you tie this thing up and get it out of your way. When you air up your tires, when you're getting off the trail, um, you just put it back on, that's it. And that will give you that stability that you're used to when you're driving your Subaru Outback or your Subaru Outback Wilderness. Now, I was driving it, I just, I just took it off, I went and did some tests. So let's talk through the tests that we did and how the vehicle performed. On the first test, it was with the front sway bar connected. Now. In the video, I'm not sure how well you can tell, but I can feel in the video when I'm going over these bumps, I have a small dirt bike track out back that I built for my son, and th that's what I use for this example. What happens with your sway bar connected is the whole vehicle kind of rolls a bit, and you can feel it's very, um, it's very responsive to that bump, and the whole vehicle kind of rolls. Now. What I did was I went over it a couple of different times. I have a small little double and a set of four whoops that I also drove over. And with the sway bar connected, it's just very jittery. You're kind of bouncing around. Um, it's uncomfortable to be quite honest. Now, when you take the sway bar off, you take your 17 millimeter socket, you undo that bolt, you pop your sway bar out, you zip tie it up. Where I zip tied it, to the brake line was probably a bad idea because then it got jammed up under the brake line mount on the body. So I just took the whole thing completely off. But once you zip tie it, I, I took it back to the same double and the same whoops and I went over it again. Um, again, I haven't looked at the footage from this so I don't know how much of a difference it is for you or how well you can tell, but the whole front of the vehicle just kind of floats over top the double and over top those whoops. It's just a very smooth, nice, comfortable experience where when the sway bar was connected, you would almost feel like you're gonna hit that three wheel motion. You almost felt like one of those wheels was gonna come off the ground. And that's what the sway bar does. When everything is connected and you go into three wheel motion in your Subaru, it is simply because that sway bar is what's keeping each wheel from articulating independently. Um, without being too scientific, it just 
it, it's supposed to hold you closer and tighter to the ground. Well, in off-road situations, and if you take your Subaru into unknown territory, you want to have this vehicle operating at its fullest capacity um, for the conditions that you're driving it in. And that's why reconnecting it once you get back on the road is generally optimal for most people because at that point, you're back to your traditional driving situation, you're back on road, and you have nice, nice tight steering. So this is done for our vehicle with the Ironman suspension lift up front and in the rear. Now, once you put the Ironman suspension lift on, it is already a lot more tight when you're driving. Like every move is super jerky. So what I wanted to do is kind of see what this felt like when I went on road. I just drove down to the gas station and I was gonna bring you guys along with me and put a camera in the car, but it really doesn't do it much justice because I'm, you're not gonna be able to tell or feel what I'm feeling. So it is so much better driving without your front sway bar connected because it's smoother. Around the turns, it doesn't feel so tight. Over bumps when you're pulling into the gas station, it kind of just floats. Everything about having my sway bar disconnected is, I, I'm in love with the, the feeling of it already. And I want to shout somebody out, SK underscore Foz. His name is Matthew and he is on Instagram. Follow him if you don't know who he is. He has been patronizing me slightly to disconnect the sway bar in the car and just experience it. And I've been putting it off, putting it off, putting it off. But we are headed down to West Virginia tomorrow, my buddy Andrew and I, and we're going on a uh, fall foliage photography trip. And we're gonna take the Subaru with us. We're gonna take the teardrop camper and we're gonna kind of put it through its paces. I wanna hit one of these off-road trails just to see how this vehicle does in those conditions with the sway bar disconnected. But SK underscore Foz, he has been um, telling me to do this for a long time. He has a really awesome Subaru build and he has had his sway bars disconnected probably from the beginning. But I have not disconnected the rear sway bars yet. I will do another video once I disconnect the rear sway, rear, it's kind of hard to say, rear sway bars. And I will tell you my experience with that as well. But I can probably, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say once you take this front sway bar end link off, you will not put it back on because the vehicle actually drives better. It's more comfortable, it's more of a luxurious drive where with your sway bar connected, it is very tight, jumpy, um, it feels almost like a sports car, which a lot of people might like. And if you like that type of driving experience, then definitely just reconnect it once you get off the trail. But if you're looking for something that's smoother, more comfortable, that's what you, um, th disconnecting your sway bar end link, taking that off, having those disconnected all the time is completely safe to do. Um, and it's definitely a better driving experience. So all that being said, I hope I was able to kind of walk you through a little bit of that process. It is a very, very simple process. It, while you're airing down, you can do it and you can get right back on the road and reconnect it and have no issues at all driving the way that you want to drive. So until next time, um, we're going to go do this photography trip. We're going to go try to get some good fall color. We're going to take the Subaru out. I'll upload that video once we get back and I have time to edit it, but I will see you guys on the next one.